I have a question. UMS built four new buildings in the last two and a half years. All Mexican labor. Illegal Mexicans. And the governor approved it. That's what we started. Now my question is, laid off about 2,000 cement workers, carpenters, builders of different kinds. And the general contractor is three of them who built those buildings. And over 2,000 work for each one of the contractors, illegal Mexicans. I don't think that's right. And I don't think the governor should approve it. Between the VA hospital and those four new buildings for UMS, that ought to be citizens ought to come first. And they had regular people. But then they hired these people at 350 an hour. And all that money went back to Mexico. What other than what they spent for food and clothing. And the governor subsidized, the governor, subsidized uh, Social Security, all the freebies, food stamps, all this stuff, while they worked a consistent job. And our American citizens, some of them, numerous non-Caucasians, was laid off at six, seven dollars an hour, hired as people at three fifty an hour. I pursued this over the last two years. I speak enough Spanish to get me in trouble. So I know that these contractors could care less who they have and want to get somebody two or three dollars an hour. But the governor should be responsible to the American people here in Arkansas to protect <coughs> their rights. It seems like the citizens in Arkansas have no rights. 58,000 illegal Mexicans are working in Arkansas without any reason. What's the governor doing about this? What is the American people, the Senate and Congress of Arkansas doing about it? Seems like nothing. But I feel apathy for the contractors cement workers, frame workers, carpenter workers, that have been laid off, several thousand of them, at UMS, when that's a federal and state bill. I don't think it's right. Well, I'll, let, I'll respond, and if anyone else up here would like to respond to that, I mean, it, uh, it would, first of all, we, we don't see, I mean, I don't know that that occurred. Uh, it would be nice to see the documentation of, uh, of the existing folks being laid off for, for others to be hired. Also, within the Rockefeller Foundation report, as a result of those individuals that are here, about 22,000 jobs were created in Arkansas alone that allowed people, Anglos and African Americans who are here, jobs. Those 22,000 jobs were primarily to them. So, um, you know, there, there really is a, a positive impact on uh, those immigrants who, just by virtue of being here, are creating jobs. Now, I'll let anybody else here who would like to respond. I, I would just say that the allegation that you've got 2,000 skilled workers working at UAMS for $3.50 an hour is just pure nonsense. Um, right now, I, in fact, I've, I've been visiting with some janitorial services this morning, and they are trying, desperately trying to hire people. And one of the men told me, he said, he said, we can't hire Latinos anymore because they've already moved up the ranks from janitorial. Janitorial is what they went to work in when they first got here. And the Latino community in Arkansas has such a reputation within the business community, not for cheap labor, but for hard work, that those people now are, are collecting 10 to $15 an hour. You can't hire anyone for minimum wage in Arkansas without the Latino community anymore. And those wages have gone up. So the idea that you've got you've got a cement man making three fifty an hour, that just that just doesn't that is that is a phantom. That does not exist. Well I challenge you to look at the contractors, the three contractors, general contractors at UMS. The buildings are almost finished. That's been ongoing for two and a half years. So I challenge you to go to the general contractors and ask for their payroll see what they're doing about the accountability for those people they laid off and now they hired these Latinos in there to come in and do work. I challenge some of those Latinos because I have a card of limitation that provided me with this privilege. So therefore I challenge some of them in Spanish. They started running like rabbits. They wouldn't answer my questions. So I went over to the general contractor to talk to him. He said, I don't know what's happened to them. They all hid when I started questioning about their legality of working for them federal government program, federal and state. But this pathetic to let this happen and the governor possibly started approving. Now the present governor is saying, okay, let's slide. 
And so therefore, this is ridiculous for the Arkansas, for the American citizens in Arkansas that's here long before those people came to lay them off for some mediocre group of illegals. They're, they're federal criminals of what they are until they're legalized. I'm for legalization all the way, but do it the right way. And I don't care who they are or what color they are. Do it the right way. If we went to Mexico, they put us in jail now if they're doing the same thing here in Arkansas. I would also suggest that if the gentleman would like a press conference of his own, that he's certainly free to call it after our press conference is done. And I don't want to speak for Steve or any of the rest of the members of this coalition. Um, I appreciate your, your comments, sir, and I understand uh, economic stress, and I understand the pinch people are feeling. And unfortunately, though, I think that people are looking it happens all the time. It happened in 1930s Germany. And the scapegoat today happens to be his teens. And I think references to non-Caucasians uh, makes it abundantly clear that that, that is uh, much more the uh, what's behind some of these remarks than a the real problem. I think that these are ad hominem attacks. We, these are, uh, we have no basis to back up uh, this data until we do. I think that we